Welcome back to Delicious and Nutritious. I am going to be your chef, Billy Lutz. So today, we're gonna to start focusing and getting prepped on Cinco de Mayo, all the way leading up until Cinco de Mayo. That's one of the reasons why I started my channel right now is because I have a really good recipe that's going to be the second video that we do check out beyond our introduction. So this video is going to be focused around guacamole. So guacamole, I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love this food. I think it's absolutely amazing. It's super nutritious for the body. So each and everything that we do go through, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I use. Every single thing that I buy, unless I really cannot find it, and sometimes when I can't find it, I choose not to buy it. And it's going to be organic. The reason why we choose organic food, number one, organic food is going to be free of pesticides, herbicides, and other chemicals, and everything like that. So that is very important to me. Anything that I put in my body, I wanna make sure it's pure, number one. Number two is gonna have healthy soil practices meaning that every time you plant a crop, you must rotate that crop before you plant it again. Oftentimes you'll drive past some type of farming field and you'll see like really dry soil. Like that is not the way to treat your soil. You need to let it regenerate so that all of our food can actually have the nutrients, vitamins, and minerals that it is supposed to have in it that comes from the soil. Think about plants. They are basically a conduit between the soil, they suck the nutrients out of the soil, you know, are exposed to the sun, to the rain, and then they form these beautiful fruits that then have all those nutrients in it so then we can consume them, right? So they are basically the intermediary between the soil and our bodies. The fruits and vegetables and animals and everything like that are gonna be what provide us the nutrients. So organic, absolutely must. But if you are on maybe a budget or you think that organic food's too expensive, I would challenge you to ask you why do you think that regular food is so cheap that's more of the mindset I want you guys to get in. But beyond that, there is a concept called the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. Clean 15 is gonna be 15 foods that are okay for you guys to buy non-organic. Think about those foods such as an avocado. Avocado has a rind around it, so if you do spray a chemical on it, it's not going right into the fruit, right? Or, on the other hand, the Dirty Dozen is things that don't have rinds, that you eat the actual skin, such as strawberries, blueberries, I put all of my ground vegetables in there because if you spray any type of chemicals around there, it's gonna go into the ground such as sweet potatoes, regular potatoes. Today what we're gonna do, this recipe is going to be from Culinary Hills. It is going to be in the pinned comments. This is gonna be the copycat chipotle recipe is what they call it. So what we're gonna need today is we're gonna need avocados. So I wanna go through this real quick. How do you pick out an avocado? So when I first got these two days ago, they were all ready and exactly how I wanted them. But if you don't know how to pick an avocado, you see these, they look exactly the same. Typically speaking, when you see avocados turning darker, closer to black, that means they're getting more ripe, which is true. However, usually speaking, what you wanna do is you want to make sure that you can press into these. That's what you're gonna have to do. So this one is gonna be a little bit harder. And this one is gonna be much softer. If you see the difference there, this one, more challenging to push into as you can see. This one is going to be a little bit easier to push into, meaning that this one is riper. This one is ready to go for sure. Honestly speaking, this one's ready to go for sure. If I put a little bit more pressure, you can see it right there. And then this one, ready to go as well. So all three of these are going to be ready to go. But normally speaking, sometimes you may see one like this and you push really hard into it and maybe it doesn't give any give like this. You're like pushing really hard, you don't see any give. That means that it's not ready to go. So if you do happen to buy something and it's not ready to go, what I suggest doing is you can take the other avocados and you can put them in a paper bag and you can also throw a banana in there. Bananas are notorious for ripening things much faster. The one thing I wanna caution you guys against is do not cut into an avocado that is not ripe. It is not a good idea, it will not ripen. It's gonna basically just be like a hard avocado for the rest of its life. And unfortunately speaking, for the most part, you're not gonna be able to use it. So we have our avocados. We are going to need two avocados for this recipe. I have three. I wouldn't really worry too much about that. So additionally speaking, we are going to need, it says here, if you guys do wanna follow the recipe exactly, I'm gonna slightly modify this. It's going to be a teaspoon of fresh lemon juice, a teaspoon of fresh lime juice, and then it's also gonna be a quarter cup of red onion. So for this recipe, they ask for half of a regular jalapeno. However, I am going to use the pickled jalapenos these ones are gonna be organic. The reason why I choose organic is because peppers are notoriously 
GMO'd and uh, basically bred to be spicier. This is a great brand. The other one is gonna be called La Preferida. La Preferida, the cool thing about that one is when you do buy it, unfortunately Whole Foods did not have that one. It does tell you, you can either get mild or medium jalapenos. So they do have different options if you're trying to get around some spice. And then finally speaking, a great heavy metal detoxifier, great for the body, is gonna be cilantro. So cilantro is extremely healthy. It does a lot of amazing things for the body. And I always, when I'm doing my herbs, I'm always shooting for organic. I, I just, you know, everything I can possibly do to serve the environment, to make sure that we are removing pesticides. Because remember, every single time that you guys vote, what I mean by vote is you spend your money. That means you want more of whatever you're buying. So please be very conscious of whatever you're buying out there because that's basically voting. You're putting money into that company saying, yes, please do more of this. I'm a supporter of this. And then finally, obviously we do need some chips. So corn is one of the most GMO crops ever. Meaning when you have a genetically modified organism, it was genetically modified by a company that produces chemicals roundup. Monsanto is a big company that has produced many different things, including genetically modified organisms so they can handle higher doses of their chemical herbicide that is going to be Roundup. So instead of using that place scenario, organic food does not allow genetically modified organisms or pesticides and herbicides. They use natural means of doing that. And plus, think about it like this. If the crop is really, really strong, they have their own immune systems. What do you think essential oils are? Those plants will be able to fend off other things if they're extremely strong. But why would you need to spray and have Roundup and other chemicals like that going onto the plants? It's because they're weaker plants, because the soil is degraded, because they're not getting all the nutrients, so their immune systems aren't as strong. So it's actually just like a band-aid over the real actual problem. So when we are talking about chips, I really like this brand. This is going to be a grain-free. It is going to be Siete. Siete makes amazing chips. They are gonna be made of cassava flour, which is a root. If you guys do wanna see it here, really like their brand. They have a bunch of different chips as well. If you do eat corn chips and you want to have corn chips, number one, make sure that they're not made with canola oil. Canola oil is a no-go oil for us. Number two, I wanna make sure that they are always, always, always organic. Organic is very important for corn because like I said, it is one of the top most heavily genetically modified organisms. Number one, number two, it gets sprayed the most with pesticides and chemicals. So it is literally like, if it's not organic, extremely unhealthy for you. And then they fry it in oils and if you're not conscious of what oils are going in, it just can really be a downturn for your health. So make sure to choose the appropriate corn chip these ones are really good. They honestly taste just like corn. I don't think that anybody out there, if I put these in a big bucket and I had a guacamole, that anybody would know anything else. So now that we're good, we have all our healthy ingredients. We are obviously gonna need a cutting board, a knife, and beyond that, that's really all we're gonna need except a bowl. And then we're gonna use either a spoon or a fork, depending on which you prefer, to whip up all of the avocados. And I'm gonna do everything as minimalist as possible so that you guys can cook exactly how you are. You don't have to worry about getting any fancy things. And obviously speaking, we can get fancy things, but we don't always need to. Okay, so first things first, we are gonna to need to cut our avocados. So there is a way to cut avocados. Whenever I cut avocados, I am going to take off this little stem. I don't want that to get into my guacamole. It does happen quite frequently. So I'm gonna de-stem all of these and make sure that they're not on there before I start cutting them. And I have seen people like cut avocados in half and then scoop them and do all these weird things. But what I suggest doing is you basically just put your knife into it. You basically make a circle, right? So there's half of it. And then some people twist and scoop. I don't do that. What I do is I then go ahead and here, I go all the way around a second time. So I, I did two full circles all the way around the avocado and then I can peel it open. And then when I am ready, right? It just sits like this. A perforated knife is gonna be more advantageous for you right here. I'm going to have the bowl sitting right here and we are going to then take this avocado and since I cut it like this, I can basically just use my finger if it doesn't come out too easily and go like that. So you guys do see a little bit of discoloring in the avocado. Honestly speaking, it doesn't matter that much, but if it does bother you, you can cut it out, right? So I just put my finger through and then go like that. If it was a little bit less ripe, I would be able to do this and it would just basically peel, but the avocado, so see like that, it peels. 
Sometimes when the avocados get a little bit riper, they don't peel so easily. So there's number one. And I'm gonna add in three avocados to this one. You can always just do two. two. So this one is, I bought these a couple days ago, a little bit more discolored. Sometimes when I go like that, it'll leave some of the discoloration on there. And sometimes I just leave that one. This one's a little bit more discolored right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that out. And I'm gonna use that. Sometimes when it gets too discolored, that's gonna be an oxidation process. And since this is a fat, not the most optimal thing to have completely oxidized, such as this. That one, if I had a compost, I would definitely compost. I suggest you guys start composting. If you don't compost, really like composting. It honestly produces the deepest, blackest soil. It is absolutely amazing. And look at this avocado. This is a beautiful one. Just right there like that, cutting it in that swift two circles fully around. Look at this one. Man, that is how you want an avocado to look right there. It is literally perfect, comes right out, leaves absolutely nothing left. Jeez, that is super optimal right there. And then lastly speaking, there you go. So now we have all of our avocados in the bowl. The bowls that I like to use, they have like little grips on the bottom, so it's, it sticks when you're gonna go ahead and go after it. So there's all of our avocados right there. Um, honestly, right now, probably want to wash your hands. And the next step is going to be, you can decide if you want this in your guacamole or not, is going to be the lime and the lemon juice. When you do put this in, it really does change the guac. It puts much more of a sour bite to it. So if you do want this, you can, but today I'm going to opt out of it. If you do want it, a great way to do this is to cut this lime in half. If we don't have any type of juicer, what you can do, move this over here, is you can just star this multiple different ways, just like this. And then when you do go ahead and squeeze it, it is going to then start to juice a lot more. And you can also just keep cutting it a bunch of different ways like this. And you really just wanna get the knife in between. Sometimes the limes get a little bit hard in between each of the, uh, I don't know, the sections. And then so I just go ahead and then squeeze it, put my fingers in there and that's my really unofficial way of juicing a lime. Honestly, you have the clamps that you can put the, the rind in and clamp down, which is much more efficient. But like I said, I don't want you guys to be inhibited by not having anything. And so that is definitely one of the ways to do so. And then you can put it together and then squeeze it some more as well. So there is gonna be the lime. If you do choose to put that in there, go ahead and do so. Do one batch with it, do one batch without it, and then you can go from there and see which one that you like the best. So since we're not gonna put the lime in, the one thing about the lime is it does give a little bit of liquid to the mixture, but we're gonna go ahead and start smashing this avocado. So another super easy way to do this is with a fork, but if you do have a potato masher, a potato masher is a great way to do that. But right now I don't have a potato masher on me. I'm not in my official place yet, so I don't have all my utensils. So you can just go ahead and use a fork Go ahead and really smush that avocado. And depending on how you like it, if you want it chunkier, just don't do as much. But if you want to have it much smoother, you're just really gonna have to go ahead and start really getting those down, pushing them up against the side right there. That's gonna be the easiest way to get off those big chunks, just like this. And then you basically then take it off the side and whip it together. This is going to be Plenty good for me right there. That's gonna be a nice, great whipped avocado. Little bit of chunk still in there, just like that. Alrighty, next is gonna come up is going to be the cilantro. Cilantro is an amazing food. Really actually love this herb, absolutely great. So we are going to need two tablespoons of cilantro to put into this. And if you wanna do a little bit less, guys, honestly speaking, less is better in this guac mix. I'm telling you sometimes. Really play around with it. This is gonna be what I do. And if you guys do want the full recipe, it's all the way in the pinned comments as always. You guys can just easily follow it and add in everything you want. But I honestly think that this guac is a home run hit modified. So when I'm using the cilantro, I don't really worry about the stems to be quite honest with you. You can, but what I do, I get a nice flat knife and I have it here. And then I'm basically just gonna chop that up. I'm gonna chop it a little bit finer here today. And some of you guys may be wondering this cooking sheet. You can get them on Amazon, uh, but this particular one is gonna be from Vitamix. They're pretty inexpensive. 
and they're pliable as well. So they're really easy for you to like pick stuff up and dump it in there. So we're looking to get two tablespoons of cilantro here. Alrighty. There's a rough tablespoon number one and a rough tablespoon number two. And then we will have some cilantro left over, which we will store. But the one thing about cutting up herbs, guys, is that once you cut them, any type of plant, once you cut it, it's starting to diminish its own life force, right? So as quickly as possible, that's why fresh herbs are so highly regarded in a lot of other cultures and why they go to their gardens, they pick their fresh herbs, is because it has a life force, right? The longer it stays from cut, this is the furthest from it, and then if you cook it and anything like that, it starts to get even further, but the closer from the ground you can get it, the more health benefits those herbs are going to bring to your body. We now need the red onion. Onions are another really, really good food for you. Really cleansing, anti-parasitic, great for the body. When I do onions, I'm gonna use the perforated knife at first, so I can go ahead and go right there, cut off the ends, it's usually how I do it, and then I do a similar thing right here, except I only do it half, and then I go ahead and I snag right there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and peel all around the onion. That's how I do it. If anybody else has a more efficient way, I'd be happy to hear that in the comments below. Red onions in compost do absolutely amazing. When you have the avocado pits in there, when I was in Atlanta, I literally just threw the avocado pits in there. If you've ever tried to sprout an avocado pit, it's quite challenging. I just literally threw like 15 avocado pits. Every time I would eat avocados, I would throw the pits in there with the rinds, let it churn through. In the spring, I literally had 15 avocado plants, 12 inches tall, hitting the top, ready to come out with no sunlight in there as well. Absolutely amazing. I, I could not believe that that was happening. They were germinating and sprouting all the way to 12 inches long without any aid as compared to if you ever put them in the little dish and you have the toothpicks and you're trying to hang it over water and trying to sprout the roots from the bottom, it's a nightmare. Just throw them into your compost and they're gonna come out amazing. All right, we have our onion. Now we're gonna transition into the flat blade knife. So what I would say is just use that cut that I had earlier. This is probably approximately a quarter cup and it's gonna be finely chopped is gonna be what they're requesting here. So finely chopped, and if you are somebody that wants to clean all your blades and your mat every single time after you use it, probably getting a little bit of uh, anxiety watching me cook here. <laughs> we don't have any cross-contamination of meat or anything like that. And then if I cut that properly, and then I cut like this, I'm gonna have a nice, finely chopped onion. I am already starting to feel it in my eyes. That's what I notice when I, obviously, you know, I've been on organic food for quite a while. If anybody does know me, if you don't, I've been eating organic food for quite a long time, but man, organic food has something else special about it. So if you want to get even finer chopped than this, you can do so and just chop these a little bit, but look at, it's a pretty good fine chop just by doing that and just being really careful. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that these are separated. It's gonna be a lot more than a quarter cup, actually. All right, so quarter cup onions going into the avocados as well. Lastly, we have one of the most important ingredients. I really like the pickled jalapenos. We are going to take this off and get it ready. If you want to use regular jalapenos, you can do that as well. I like the pickled. I think it kind of brings a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of sour in there. I'm going to take approximately a rough handful. So if I'm looking at this, um, it does call for half of a jalapeno. So this is gonna be up to discretion on how much kind of spice you want in it. Do you want a little bit of kick, a little bit of sourness because of the pickledness? So you guys can go ahead and chop this up if you want. Best way to do it. Pretty easy to chop when they are pickled. All right. And we have our pickled chopped jalapenos, a little bit over an eighth cup. And then we're gonna put that in there. And one of the final ingredients, one of the most important ingredients is going to be salt. So if we're looking here, I have pink Himalayan sea salt, and then I have something in another jar that's gonna be gray salt. So if we're looking at these two, they have a very high micro mineral count, which is really important, number one. Number two, the gray salt actually has the most diverse and unique micro minerals. 
Second place is going to be the pink Himalayan sea salt. I do like the pink factor as well. So I switch on and off between gray salt and pink salt. Neither of them have different tastes, but it's very important that you're getting that. If you don't want to go more exotic salts, what you can do is you can go on just regular sea salt, but that one's kind of been a little bit uh, commercialized. So I like the gray and the pink Himalayan sea salt. Those are going to be my two options. So we're going to use the gray today because I don't really feel like grinding this one to get it. And this one says salt on the recipe. So for me, salt, I am going to use a quarter teaspoon and then we're going to mix it all together. And then you're going to taste it for yourself. And you want to see, is that going to be enough salt for you? Because you can always add more. You can't subtract the salt. So I am going to go ahead and mix this up. Make sure to get those onions. And another thing, if you're trying to go really chunky on this guacamole, you're not going to want to mix it too much right up front because you're going to have these onions in here and then you're going to want to mix these obviously in as well. Make sure there's no big chunks in there. And by mixing that up right there, that is going to then make the avocado a little bit even smoother because you want to really mix this up. This is super important, very important part. And then, the cool thing is, is if you have the lime and the lemon and you try this, you're like, mm, I really like to have a little bit more of that citrusy, sour type feel to it as well. You can go ahead and add that in. Starting off with the base, having the lemon and the lime on the side, and then starting off with a quarter teaspoon of salt, and then going from there is gonna be really important. So now we have ourselves an amazing guacamole. Okay, so for me, I just try it. This is my avocados, <laughs> my guacamole. Do what you do for yours. If you're making it for a lot of people, maybe don't retry it, use a different fork, but I'm gonna go ahead and try this. That's really tasty, super tasty. You might wanna go just a little bit less on the salt, maybe a little bit under a quarter of a teaspoon, but honestly speaking, it's, it's really flavorful. I could definitely see some people wanting to have a little bit of that sourness added into it, but as of right now, that, that's extremely good, I, I really like that. And then paired with your favorite Siete chip, it's gonna be absolutely amazing. When you're eating guacamole, you really want kind of like a straight up and down edge as well. Just because when you scoop, this has more chance that the guacamole is gonna start falling out. So having those straight up and downs is really good. I just don't have that right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and scoop a little bit of this in here. It's gonna be fantastic. This is a for sure knock out of the park dish to bring to any type of Cinco de Mayo party that you may be going after. You could even garnish it off just to make it look super official. Doesn't really do too much, but even putting in a little bit of a lime right on the lip makes it official. Well, thank you for tuning in guys. I appreciate you guys making some tasty, delicious, good quality, good dense fat food. That's going to be amazing for your Cinco de Mayo party. Make sure to share this video for anybody out there that's looking for an easy recipe to bring to a party. This guacamole is going to be a sure hit. It is in the pinned comments below for the complete recipe. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and I'm gonna see you guys out. We're gonna be cooking some more food very soon.